Today we can learn how to match skin tones of different areas of the body in Photoshop. Now I have two techniques for you to do that and three examples so that we build up a strong grasp over the concept. So without any further ado, let's get started. It's so good to be back. This video is divided into sections. So if you want to go ahead and skip to any section, you can use these timestamps. So here we are in Photoshop and this photo was submitted by Heather Yeager. She is an amazing photographer. I'm totally in love with her work. You can always go ahead and check out her work right over there. Now, as you can see in this image, the skin tone of the face is not matching with the skin tone of her shoulders. Heather told me that she is into sports, so it's very obvious. So what are the things that we should consider when it comes to matching the skin tones? Now here comes the concept which is very important to understand. When it comes to matching skin tones, two things need to be kept in mind. Lightness and color. In other words, brightness and the skin tone. Okay? Now what do I mean by that? Let's focus on the first part. Brightness or lightness or luminosity. You need to determine whether you need to brighten or darken that particular area to match with the skin tone of other area without thinking about the color. If that area is tanned, you need to brighten it and then take care of the color. That's a completely different department. Color is different, okay? If it's bright, if there's a discoloration, you have to darken it and then take care of the color. So lightness is taking care of how bright or dark that is. Second is color, as the name suggests. If uh, it has gone dark at the same time it has got a little bit of magenta tint you need to apply the opposite color which is green to neutralize that to match with the other areas of the skin so on and so forth we're going to discuss that in detail later so two things remember lightness and color now let's jump back to Photoshop now before we do anything before we apply the first method have a look we need to clean this up Okay, so cleanup is essential for both the techniques or any of the techniques that you use apart from these two. All right, so how do we clean that up? Very easy to do. As you can see, the face is totally cleaned up. If it was not, we would have thought otherwise. But in this case, the face is totally clean and we need to clean this as well. All right, to some degree, if you want to, completely, if you want to, it's totally upon you. So let's go ahead and create a new layer by clicking on the new layer button. And let's name this blemishes if you want to or spots whichever word is your favorite. Now let's zoom in a little more and use the regular healing brush tool. Let's go ahead, right click on here and choose the healing brush tool, the regular one, not the spot healing brush tool. Okay, let's make the brush a little bigger. To make the brush bigger in Windows, you can hold the Alt key and the right mouse button. Hold the right mouse button, drag it to the right to make it bigger, drag it to the left to make it smaller. If you're using a Mac, that would be Option and control. Hold the option and control and the right mouse button, drag it to the right and left. Now, sometimes what's going to happen is, and this is an error reported time and again, that when you make the brush bigger or smaller, this red preview appears in between. Now, sometimes that preview just doesn't appear, no matter what you do. That's a bug in Photoshop. If you're using the very latest version version of Photoshop, you might see the bug. So all you have to do, just restart Photoshop and it will be fine. Probably by the time you're watching, this might have been fixed, but if it's not, just restart Photoshop. All right, so all you have to do is zoom in and make sure you have sample, current, and below, or all layers, and just take a sample and simply paint. Take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key, and as soon as you hold the Alt key, the cursor changes to a target icon. Just click on a similarly textured area, just once, and just fill up that. And let's go ahead and clean up all of this. So we are zoomed in, you can hold the space bar and have a look at the cursor. The cursor changes to a hand and you can use the hand to drag and move around. Okay, so that's a tip right over there. Now, as you can see, the hairs are getting a little messy. So you'll have to remove the hair right over there because uh, there's a couple of marks and the hairs are all around. If you try to do it, it's going to be messy. So it's better that we remove the hair. So just simply paint over that. And we're going to go ahead and remove the extra hairs that we can see. 
if we didn't remove the hair, it would smudge. It's still smudging, but you need to be really careful about things like this. As you can see, there's still red over here and it's not going with a regular healing brush. Then let's switch to the clone stamp tool when nothing works. The clone stamp always does because it just simply copies and pastes. It doesn't try to match anything, the match, uh, the texture, the color or whatever. It just simply copies and pastes. It's like a copy and paste in a brush. All right, that looks fine to me. Right over here over there. All right. It's too much. Let's try some other area like that. Okay, that's better. That's even better. All right, let's zoom out and have a look at this. It's much better than before. Have a look at the before and after. So this is the before. This is the after. It's pretty much cleaned up. This area, I think, needs a pretty much uh, a little bit more cleaning. Let's have a look before, after. This is pretty good. Let's clone stamp this area into this area. Add some texture over there. It was mi missing a little texture from this particular area right over there like that. And it's pretty good. I think it is. Let's add some texture. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and add texture to a dark area, here's what you can do. Change the blend mode of the brush, of the clone stamp tool brush from normal to darken or multiply, right? So let's try darken and let's try to copy this texture over there. So let's see whether that, yes, that copies the texture without brightening it, okay? Let's try multiply. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We gotta try, all right? So multiply, let's try to sample this. No, it's, it's totally not working. Darken is the one which you need to use. All right, so much of a texture. Let's go back, let's zoom out a little bit. It's pretty fine, but this hair, I don't know, that's disturbing me. We gotta get rid of that. See, I changed the blend mode to lighten because I want to take away the hair and the hair was darker than the skin. So if you change the blend mode to lighten, it will just paint on the hair. Now it's much more better. All right, so that was worth doing it. Have a look. So have a look at the before, after. It was worth doing. You can, you can take more time and clean this up even better. So there you go. It's totally cleaned up. Have a look. Before, after. Remember, if the skin is smooth, you don't have to do that, okay? Now we can go ahead and match the skin and now exactly starts method number one. So the first technique to match skin tones is using curves. Now curves is something which you need to master in. It's a really useful tool when it comes to Photoshop and I personally cannot imagine my Photoshop life without curves. All right, so click on the adjustment layer icon and simply choose curves. Now inside of curves, you can take it all the way up just to identify which areas are you painting. Take it all the way up just like that. And all you have to do, invert the mask. Click on the mask, make sure the mask is selected, press Ctrl or Command I. Okay, this creates a negative mask. This paints the mask completely in black. Now, what is the concept of mask? Black are the areas which do not show up and white are the areas which show up. So black hides, white shows. Right now, as you can see, the mask is completely black. So the layer or the adjustment layer is not visible in any area of the image. Okay, so if we take the brush and make sure the foreground color is white, press X to toggle between background and the foreground, press D to reset the swatches. If we paint over there, nothing happens because black is the color and it's already black. Let's press X and if you paint, see the effect starts to appear. So make sure that you paint only on that affected area. You don't have to be super accurate about this, but if you want to be accurate, please go ahead. Always welcome. Okay, let's fill this area completely. Now let's subtract the other areas by pressing X and painting black, painting black on those areas. Extra ones and I'll paint white again in this particular area. Okay, I think that's good. All right, now let's paint a little extra area over there like that and paint out this area, that's fine. Let's revert it back to normal by clicking on this button right over there. Okay, 
Now I will tell you something which I personally do and it makes the process of matching skin tones much easier. It's completely optional. If you want to do it, do it. If you don't, don't. So we want to match the skin tone of this to the face, right? So let's cut out the face and put it beside it. All right, let's go ahead and select the background layer and simply I'll go ahead and select the lasso tool and make a selection, rough selection of the face or the skin tone that you want to match it to and I'll press Ctrl or Command J. Then we'll place it on top of everything. Why? Because we don't want the curves to affect this thing. Okay, let's place it on top of everything. With the help of the move tool, I'll just go ahead and keep it just beside this one so that we can zoom in and match it properly. So <laughs> completely optional. I know this looks weird, but this is something which you can do. All right. Now let's get back to the curves. Click on the properties. Click on this icon. It brings up the properties if you cannot see it. Then let's brighten it. Let's look at the first element. So what's the first element? The lightness. Okay, the brightness. So let's brighten it a little bit. Use this tool, use this hand over there. As you can see in this skin, this area, the highlight area is very bright and the shadow area is a little brighter, not as bright as the highlight. So target any one of those, we're going to target the shadows. So the shadows of this area, we're going to try to match it with that area. So let's click on the shadows and click and drag. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to click and then drag it from here. Just simply click and drag right from the image. So click and drag it up just like that until it matches to the brightness of that one. Don't think about color right now. Just think about brightness. Let me help you. If you don't want to be distracted by the color, here's what you can do. You can create a hue saturation adjustment layer on top of everything, okay? And take the saturation all the way to zero. Then get back to curves and then brighten it, okay? Using this tool, you're going to brighten it like that. Much easier to match the lightness, right? We will also match the contrast. Okay, that's much better. Let's zoom out and have a look. Yeah, that's matching. Let's match. Let's try to darken up the shadows a little bit more. That's fine. Let's we'll brighten up the highlights. Let's darken it up and darken up the shadows from here. You can work it that way. I think that's great. I think that's great. Have a look before after it's pretty much matching. You can make the shadows even more darker. If you want to, you can increase the contrast. But I'm going to go with this. This is fine for me. OK, before, after. It's looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and delete the hue saturation adjustment. Layer. We don't need it anymore. Now, as you can see, the brightness is now matching. Let's do the colors. So how do we do the colors? Now, this, as you can see, the shadows have a little bit of magenta to it. So let's add magenta to the shadows. So we'll go to green. Why green? Because green is the opposite of magenta. Always remember RGB opposite of CMY. So green is the opposite of magenta. So green. Let's click on the same hand tool and we want to add magenta to it. So we will drag it down, bring down the greens. Okay. So click and drag it down until it matches like that. It's pretty much matching. Not great, but it's pretty good. Okay. Now let's try moving the other sliders. Let's try increasing the blues a little bit. It's helping. Yes, it is helping. Let's try with reds. Let's try increasing the reds and then we'll try decreasing it. Decreasing it a little bit helps. I think it does. Okay. Have a look before, after. It's so much more matching. Now let's go ahead and decrease the overall colors. It's too much saturated. Create another hue saturation adjustment layer. And what you can do, you can create a clipping mask for this hue saturation adjustment layer to affect just this particular area. You don't have to copy the mask. As you can see, if I move it, it affects the complete image. Have a look. It affects the complete image. We don't want that to happen. We just want it to affect this particular area. So simply go ahead and click on the clipping mask button or hold the alt or option and click on the line between these two. You can do any of those. So let's clipping mask and let's revert back the effects and let's decrease the saturation because I think it's too much saturated and kaboom. It just matched. If you want to play with the hue, you can also do that. If you want to just go ahead and increase it probably plus two or plus three. Let's go for three and 
we are done. Let's turn this off. We don't need this anymore. Let's delete that and have a look at the complete before and after. So this is the before, this is the after. Totally matching. And if you think at this point, it's kind of too much, you can always go ahead and adjust it. Let's increase the saturation, I guess, just a little bit. And I'll go to the curves and decrease the brightness because I think the brightness is too much. So I'll just go ahead and decrease it. Not so much brightness over there. Okay, the shoulders have to be a little darker. And there you go, it completely matched. Have a look at the before and after, before, after. And here is the final result. It's time to move to example number two. And this photo was submitted by pro photographer Deepak Mahajan. Really, really beautiful work. I'm a complete fan of his photos. You can always go ahead and check more of his work right over there. Now, as you can see in this image, her skin tone on the face is different from that of the body. It's a little bit darker. Now, it's completely your call to match the skin tone of the face to the body or the body to the face. I will personally go ahead and make the face a little brighter and match it to the body. That might be completely different for, for a different image. So it's totally your call. So the second method to match the skin tones in Photoshop is using just the hue saturation adjustment layer. So here's how we go about it. Let's go ahead and create a hue saturation adjustment layer by clicking on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. Okay. Now we need to target the face, the skin tones on the face. So first of all, let's just take the hue all the way to the right. Let's increase the saturation just for identification purposes. I know she looks like an avatar, but that was not the goal. Identification is the goal. Select the mask, simply do the same thing as we did with the curves press Ctrl or Command I. Take the brush, we want to affect just this particular area. We'll make the brush a little bigger, a little softer. Hold the Alt, the right mouse button, drag it up to make it soft and drag it down to make it hard. If you're using a Mac, that would be Option and Control and then drag with the right mouse button. Okay, just paint with white on the tanned or the affected areas. and then remove the extras by painting black. Again, you don't have to be super accurate because we will be targeting the skin tones anyway. So make sure you remove that off the jewelry or any other stuff that you might come across. As you can see, the jewelry is of a similar color tone as the skin, so you don't wanna affect those because if it's a jewelry product shoot, you don't want to change the colors of it. Okay, so let's paint black in this area. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Let's paint in white a little bit over there. And that's pretty much fine. Let's paint in extra. Okay, let's click on this button to return everything to zero. We have created the mask. If you want to see the mask, hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask. As you can see, the mask is right over there. Let's clean up those extra areas. These are some extra areas which you need to clean up like that. And it's okay. Let's just clean that up. Hold the Alt or Option, click on the mask again to bring it back. Now click on this icon to bring up the properties. And what are we gonna do? Simply click on this button right over there and we will target the skin tones. So click once on the skin. So it targets a particular area, okay? So here's what we do. Make it narrower. Make this narrow. So the top bar is the complete color spectrum of the image. And the bottom bar is the result. So right now we are targeting the reds, the reds of the complete color spectrum. If we change the hue, have a look, nothing happens to the top bar, have a look. We are changing it, the top bar is changing nothing. But the bottom bar, this particular area is changing colors because we are targeting that area, that color spectrum of that image. And that will affect the image. But we wanna target the skin tone. So take the hue all the way to the right and increase the saturation for identification purposes. Make it narrower and move it around to select all of the skin. So as you can see, not all of the skin is selected, most of it is selected. So let's extend it a little bit like that. Extend it from the left a little bit. Okay. We don't wanna select the lips, so we'll just extend it like that. And we can take the inside slider to the right to make the transition smooth. 
still make sure all of it is selected. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, let's bring everything back to zero. First of all, let's make it brighter. Number one element, lightness. Zoom out a little bit. Don't think about the color right now. Just simply increase the lightness. As you can see at this point, I'm pretty much satisfied with this, but the saturation is a little less, so we'll increase the saturation. And let me give you a tip. Whatever the value of lightness is, for example, 44, do not go or avoid going too far beyond 44. A little bit is fine, but try avoiding too much, okay? So up to 44, it's completely fine. Beyond 44, you need to be careful, okay? The colors can clip and saturate, so be careful. Let's increase it just a bit like that, and that is fine, okay? That is fine, and it's done, have a look. Have a look at the before, after. I think, as you can see, it's very saturated. It looks saturated. Let's decrease the saturation. Now it's fine. Have a look at this. Before, after, before, after. Completely matching. If you wanna go ahead and play with the hue, you can do that as well. You can make it more magenta-ish. Just a little bit. I'll go to the left, minus three, that's fine. And it's solved. Time to switch to example number three, and this is a really extreme example where everything is out of place. As you can see, the sun rays is falling on her. It's looking pretty good, but on the neck, it's looking yellowish. We're gonna try to remove the sun rays from the skin and also take care of the tan right over her stomach and all of that. So we're gonna use the hue saturation method. You can also use curves, whichever is your favorite. So let's go ahead and click on the adjustment layer icon and choose hue saturation. Okay, so let's first of all target this particular area. You see, we can stack in multiple hue saturation adjustment layer with different adjustments, and that is essential for an image like this. Okay, first, let's take care of the tan. Okay, we'll click on this button and simply click on anywhere on the tan, take it all the way right, take it, increase the saturation a little bit, and make it narrower and find out exactly where the tan is. So right over just there, let's make it a little, okay, that's pretty good. On this side, okay, let's take it a little in, we don't want so much of a selection, just a little bit more. Okay, now let's try to increase the brightness, or the lightness, whatever you call it. Let's increase it a little bit and increase the saturation. It's pretty natural, have a look before, after, before, after. But it's also affecting the other areas, we don't want that to happen. With the mask selected, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush and simply just paint on the affected areas with white. We need to increase the saturation a little bit more and the hue a little bit to the left, that's fine before, after, before, after. So the tan is taken care of. Now let's take care of the yellow areas. So create a hue saturation adjustment layer again, and let's target the yellow areas. Click on this button and any of the yellow areas. Now let's make it more narrower like that. Take the hue all the way to the right, increase the saturation, and let's see which area is it affecting. Okay, let's try to move it. So you wanna target this yellow area. We'll just extend it like that. Yes, this is kind of perfect. Yes, from the right hand side, that's fine. Now, let's bring everything back to zero. Now let's try to change the hue. Let's make it a little, okay, that's fine. Let's decrease the saturation, it's very saturated. Let's try decreasing the lightness, okay? Have a look at the before and after, before, after. It's looking pretty good, but we need to darken it even more, I guess. So yes, now that's kind of matching. Now as you can see, there's a couple of spots over there. It's not looking great. Let's zoom in. It's a low quality image. So let's decrease the lightness even more. And if you do decrease the lightness, you might want to increase the saturation. That's pretty good. And let's zoom out a bit. We need to improve the mask. It's not selecting everything in order for it to just simply be a better one. Okay. We don't want to affect any other areas, but we want to improve the mask because these areas have white spots over there. 
So it's affecting other areas, we will have to use a mask, an actual mask, not the targeted area, an actual mask to paint on these things. Press Ctrl or Command I and simply use the brush and just paint on those areas. That's a better thing to do. Paint out this one. You can be super careful, I'm gonna do it very quickly for you. As you can see, this area is getting very dark, so we're gonna treat that, that separately. Okay, now have a look at this total complete before, after, before, after. Now we can take care of these little white spots by using the, the regular healing brush tool or the clone stamp tool, whichever is your favorite. Now it will not happen if you have a very high quality image, but sometimes it can. Sometimes the color difference can make it happen. All right, let's create one more hue saturation adjustment layer and let's target this specific area by using this tool and clicking on this particular area increasing the saturation, increasing the hue, and then the saturation, making it narrower. Okay, let's bring everything back to zero. Zero, and then let's increase the lightness. Now that's matching, that's matching, don't go too much. Let's decrease the saturation, and that's taken care of. Press Control or Command I, and then simply go ahead, take the brush, and then simply paint on that particular area. And there you go. This is the final result. So that's how we match skin tones in Photoshop. Now those are not just the only techniques to do it. There are a dozen other ways. However, if you have the concept clear, you can use any method that you like, not the only ones that I mentioned. So what is the concept? Number one thing that we need to take care of is lightness. And number two thing is color when it comes to matching skin tones. You can also use color balance, whatever you like, but make sure that you match the light and then the color. Just a quick little recap. First of all, what was the first method? That was curves. And the second method, that was hue saturation. Now, before you apply any technique, make sure that you clean up if it is required. I'm gonna repeat that again, only and only if it is required, clean that up as we did in the first example. Then go ahead and apply the methods. So in the first method, we applied some curves. We increased in the RGB channel, the brightness, okay? We took care of the light, and then using the red, green, and the blue channel, we took care of the color. Then we saw the saturation was too much. So we added one more hue saturation adjustment layer with the curves, and then decreased the saturation just a little bit, and clipped that to the curves adjustment layer to just limit it to that particular area as we did in the first example. In the second example, we used the hue saturation adjustment layer. It's just one, you don't have to add anything else. If you want, you can, but you don't have to add anything else. But just the hue saturation, mask that particular area, target that color, and then take care of hue, saturation, and lightness. Pretty easy, right? Now, if you have a complex image where everything is going haywire, this area is tanned, this area is brightened, this area is dark, this area is magenta-ish, then you can add a couple of few saturation layers, stack them up all each other, and then just target specific areas. You can also do this with curves. And that's pretty much it. Hope this video helped you, and if it did, make sure to give us a like, and also don't forget to subscribe, and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss a thing. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.